Welcome to the Monday Morning Haskell video blog. Uh, it's been a while since we've posted any videos here, but we are back uh, for this summer. And for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about some simple concepts in Haskell that you might not have thought about all the time, but uh, which could potentially be more common uh, than you realize, or at least more commonly useful uh, than you realize. And the first of these is the, I'll initially call it the dollar sign operator. Um, and this has an actual name, it's the function application operator, and we'll see uh, why that is. Um, but this is just something I used in my code for a long time um, without really understanding what it was or where it was rooted. I just sort of treated it like this syntactic uh, hack that you can use. And um, here's some code I have for Haskellings, and you know, we can see uh, you know, use of this uh, operator in the wild, uh, so to speak. Um, one instance, we're starting to invoke a monadic expression here, and so we have this long do block, which has many, many lines, um, but we sort of wrap that call with this with directory wrapper, and then use a dollar sign to separate off uh, the do block. And this is probably um, how you've thought, potentially, of uh, the dollar sign operator, the function application operator. Um, this is how I thought of it for a long time, of, okay, we're just going to use this to separate off um, part of our code, and we'll see why it actually uh, it has this function. Uh, I use it in the same way just several times uh, in this file alone, um, where we have on compile failure. This is another uh, monadic expression, but we wrap it with void, um, but then separate everything with the dollar sign operator. So let's see what this is all about. And if, if we were to uh, write an implementation uh, for this operator. It's actually very simple. Uh, as we said, the func function application operator, so its first argument is a function from some type A to some type B, and then it takes as its second argument uh, something of type A, and it produces something of type B. And it's actually, the implementation is trivial. <laughs> we uh, put stick the operator in the middle here, and we just apply the function against the argument. And in a sense, it's unnecessary. This operator is redundant because um, you know we already have a function application. We don't, uh, you know, we can just place expressions next to each other, and it will just do function application automatically for us. Why do we need this extra operator? And part of the key lies in the fact that uh, its infix definition is actually infix r zero. So it's uh, the r after the infix means that it binds more tightly to the right uh, of expressions, and zero means it's the lowest priority uh, possible for any kind of operator. Um, so we'll see how uh, these specific features of it really enable us to um, use it in these different uh, syntactic scenarios. Um, but to start off, let's just define a uh, simple expression that, that uses this. Uh, we could have, uh, if we wanted to, we could just have, you know, add five, and this is going to um, be a function that takes an int, produces an int, add five, and we'll define this very simply, it's plus five. And now we can define uh, 11, this is an expression that will use our function, so 11 is going to be an int, and we'll just say this is add five with six, um, we could also make a different version of 11. Put an apostrophe, and we'll say 11 uh, to add 5, but we'll also just stick the function application operator in the middle there. And these two, uh, these two expressions are the same. We go ahead and we compile our code. We have 11, we have 11. These do the same thing. Um, but when we add more pieces to our expression, uh, it becomes more obvious how we can uh, use uh, the dollar sign. So uh, let's make a slightly more complicated expression. We'll say value, and we'll say plus 11, and then add 5, 6. So our intention with this, um, we might say, is that we want to add 11, and then we want to add the results of add 5 and 6. But because normal function application binds more tightly to the right, uh, this is actually not going to compile. Uh, if we go ahead... I have to save this. Um, this doesn't compile because uh, it wants to treat add five as the second input to uh, the plus operator, and that's no good. 
Uh, so we can fix this, we can join add five and six together. We want to say we want to prioritize doing that operation first. Uh, again, I have to save my file before I recompile. And that works. Um, but it turns out the dollar sign provides us with another way to do this. We can stick the dollar sign in the middle here. And now, because its priority is so low, uh, what it will actually do here uh, is that it will do add five and six together and treat that, the result of that expression, as the second input t plus. This is exactly what we want to do. Uh, so this is an example of us uh, using um, its low priority. It turns out that, uh, you know, when, when, when I say low priority, uh, this means, um, you know, lower than any other operator. So uh, if we do some more operations here, like say six plus seven, times 11 minus four, all of these other mathematical operators are higher priority than the dollar sign. So, um, you know, there's not gonna be any problem here. Uh, it will still resolve everything to the right of the dollar sign and then use that as a single uh, input. And that's really how, you know, as I explained in the beginning, that, that that's a valid way to think of using uh, the dollar sign when it's a single uh, dollar sign in your expression. You just take everything to the right, you do all of that together, and then you take a single input uh, to what is on the left, which is hopefully a function that takes a single input. Um, now, we can, if we have multiple dollar signs in our expression, it gets a little uh, more tricky. So again, we're gonna want to produce an int, and um, you know, we can just say times 2315. This is very uh, simple. We have multiplication function, uh, it takes two inputs. Now, if we put two dollar signs in here, we might say, oh, we're just grouping these. Um, but it doesn't work out in this case. Uh, we'll try recompiling our code. And um, because it is infix r, because it binds more tightly to the right, what happens here is that it's actually going to try to apply um, 15 as an input to 23, and it's treating 23 as a function. And obviously, that doesn't work. Um, so when you, ha you have multiple dollar signs in your expression, you have to um, be a little more careful. What really should happen uh, is that you want the final piece uh, of this uh, expression to just be a single um, unit. So two plus three, that's just five. It's not a function, it's, it's just a constant value. And then every other part of this uh, line should be um, you know, a function taking a single input. So we can say times 23. And then we can make this part, we say it's plus 10. And now this will compile. What it'll do is it'll take um, the five, it'll apply that as a single uh, argument to the plus 10 function, take the results of that and apply as a single argument to times 23. So this compiles, it works. That's all good. Now there's one final use for uh, the dollar sign operation. Uh, that comes in higher order functions. So let's go ahead and write uh, a few useful expressions here. So we have our functions, plus three times five plus two, and then arguments that we want to apply to those functions, two, five, and seven. Zip with is uh, a higher order function that we can use uh, to accomplish this task. And so we want to say, you know, zip with something, I'm gonna say functions and arguments. And, you know, at first glance, uh, the, the very simple way we might write this is to use a lambda expression. So we'll say lambda f a because uh, our first list is functions, our second list is just arguments, and we just do apply. And this will uh, do what we want. We get 529 and 9, or 525 and 9. Um, but, of course, we can just replace this function with function application operator. That's exactly what... Uh, that is, so we get our uh, results just like we expect. Um, we could also uh, think about just, you know, if we have a single value that we want to apply to all of our functions, um, then it's simple to do that with uh, the dollar sign as well. So uh, we might just say, you know, map and then dollar sign zero and apply that against our different functions. And so we get three plus zero, five times, uh, which is three, five times zero, which is zero, and then two plus zero, which is two. And 
can just get this uh, results. We don't have to use a lambda expression, and that's very convenient for us. So that is uh, the end uh, of this video. What I will say, uh, you want to go into the description and hit the subscribe link. You want to subscribe to the Monday Morning Haskell uh, mailing list, although if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's also uh, pretty good. We've, we're going to have some special offers on the Monday Morning Haskell courses coming up, so uh, you're not going to want to miss that. You're going to want to subscribe to our mailing list to find about it, to find out about those. So, uh, yeah, have a good week. We'll be back next Monday with another video.